Oh, hi there, Steve here, Steve Kaufman. Today I'm going to talk about problems we have in languages and how we can overcome them uh, with particular reference to tenses, all right, and in English, but also to some extent in other languages. First of all, let me say that I'm sitting here in front of this print of a Van Gogh painting of a cafe in Arles from the 19th century. And regardless of the mistakes that we make when we speak languages, a knowledge of these languages enables us to enjoy so many things in those languages, in those cultures. For example, last night my wife and I watched Le Journal d'une Femme de Chambre, which is a um, movie which takes place in Normandy based on a novel by Octave Mirabeau. And it's just lovely to be launched into that environment and to understand the dialogue and so forth and so on. So we can make mistakes when we speak. We can still enjoy the languages in so many ways. But uh, obviously we like to speak as well as we can. Uh, however, uh, speaking with mistakes doesn't prevent us from communicating or shouldn't. But I do notice the same kinds of mistakes. For example, German people typically say, I am living here since many years, which is fine in German, Zeit, wie viel Jahr, but doesn't work in English. I have, I have been living here for so many years. Okay, uh, French friends said, when you, when you will come to Paris, I will take you out. But of course, in English, we say, when you come to Paris, I will take you out. So we have to get used to the phrasing, the use of words, the use of tenses in other languages. One of the things, and even the subjunctive, which we talked about, you know, uh, il faut que, uh, pour autant que je sache, uh, ainda que, in Portuguese, aunque, there are certain words that trigger certain tenses or certain forms of the verb. And so you can call these signal words or trigger words. So just for the fun of it, I googled to see if I could find either trigger words or signal words for different tenses. And lo and behold, there are lots of resources like this. So for example, with regard to uh, English, you know, words like often, seldom, sometimes, usually, they all trigger the simple present. I often go, I sometimes play, I usually do, all right? However, words like at the moment, listen, now, that's the progressive. Now I am eating, all right? So uh, the simple past is in 2010, yesterday, whereas the, the uh, present perfect, as it's called, I have, whatever, eaten, already, I have already eaten, I have, so far, I haven't done any, uh, up to now, so uh, all I'm saying is you should, I will maybe leave a link, and I found one for Spanish, for example, uh, similarly, what triggers the imperfect versus the past tense, so you need to go and search for these, depending on what your native language is, depending on what language you're learning, in fact, I won't leave a link, you should get in the habit of searching for these, trigger words, signal words, and you could even take the term trigger word or signal word and translate it in uh, Google Translate and then go off and search for a handy list of words that will help you appreciate when a certain tense is triggered. Now, even if you do that, if you understand that, okay, that word triggers this, that won't enable you to use it correctly. And, uh, you know, and the reason for that is that we have to develop these habits. That's why I always, in link, I will save a phrase with the trigger word, collect it, you know, tag it, collect it, and review it, trying to get my brain to notice it so that when I hear it and read it, and eventually I start to use it. But let's be realistic. It takes a lot of practice, a lot. And I noticed this, for example, I, uh, last two evenings I've had conversations in Ukrainian, and the Ukrainian grammar is very similar to Russian grammar. But some of the endings are different. Plus, obviously that some of the words are different. And uh, so while the principle is the same, uh, when I use a word that's supposed to be in a certain case, my brain is just not in the habit of doing that in Ukrainian. So I end up just giving the base word. It's as if me go, home, do, like just throwing in, you know, the word because the brain is not yet confident enough and is not trained enough 
to do it correctly, even though the principles are the same as in Russian. Okay, one of something is the nominative, two, three, four of something is the genitive singular, five and more is the genitive plural. That's the rule in all Slavic languages for nouns. And yet, I can do it in, in Russian, but when I go to do it in Ukrainian, the brain hasn't done it before. It's like an exercise, whether it be doing rolls on a mat or something. You actually have to hear it so often that the phrase rings in your brain, and when you go to do it, you do it correctly once, and then you do it correctly another time. Now, however, you at least have to be interested in getting it right. And that's why if I go back to the many people I know who are fluent speakers, uh, say German speakers, Swedish people who speak fluent English, and they'll say, it is a lot of people in China, instead of there are, because that's more similar to what happens in Swedish. So to, to change that, they would have to be aware of it, focus on it, see it many, many times, start to do it, and eventually they'll get better and better at, at training a new habit. Okay, but getting back to my original comment, uh, I think it was Catalan said that a language is the only thing worth knowing poorly. So to whatever extent you have a knowledge of another language, you can start enjoying that language. And so that enjoyment is the main thing. And you can keep on working on improving your accuracy, but the fact that you make mistakes shouldn't detract from your enjoyment. However, when you speak, I guess the main thing in speaking is that we should be able to communicate. I'm going to leave a link in the description box of the French language debate amongst the uh, candidates for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Of the 14 people there, I think there were two francophones. There was one anglophone who spoke French very well, right down to a guy who no one could understand <clears throat> what he was saying. So uh, you can click on that link to see the range of these conservative candidates attempting either speaking French well or attempting to speak French well. Full marks to them for trying. But in there, there's someone who obviously is not communicating in the language. In fact, I might extract his uh, presentation and make it a second link. So those of you who are interested, please have a look. And it's not to laugh at people, although it is quite funny, this one, gentlemen. But it is to point out that when we go to speak in a language, we have to at least make sure we are at a level where people can somehow make out what it is we're saying. When we are just not able to enunciate anything, we should continue to focus on our input activities, acquiring more words, getting used to hearing the language so that, so that when we go to speak it, we have some point of reference, all right? So with that then, I leave you with a thought. If you want to get better at these sort of nagging problems that people have, even people who speak quite well, focus on the trigger words or signal words, review them, and then just get used to noticing them, noticing them so that you can gradually train your brain to produce them uh, correctly. There you go. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. Bye for now.